Tonight, Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer has some splaining to do. We've got a tech stock crumble and how you can fly like an eagle while safely on the ground. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 82 for Wednesday, May 7th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Big names, the biggest names really in tech, such as Amazon, Google, Kickstarter, Twilio, Codecademy, OpenDNS, Zynga, Tumblr, Reddit, and Foursquare have all signed a letter protesting the proposed net neutrality rules that the FCC is considering ahead of its May 15th meeting. The letter protests that the FCC's plans to implement net neutrality rules could let ISPs charge content providers like Netflix or Amazon deliver their packets faster or at a higher quality, and that... Quote, instead of permitting individualized bargaining and discrimination, the commission's rules should protect users and internet companies on fixed and mobile platforms against blocking, discrimination, and paid prioritization and should make the market for internet services more transparent. This proposed change in rules, which comes after the original network neutrality rules implemented in 2010 were struck down by a U.S. federal court of appeals earlier this year, continue to unfold. But May 15th is right around the corner. Yesterday, we talked about Twitter's 18% stock drop due to a big sell-off. Today, it's now down more than 20% if you look over both days. But it's not just Twitter. AOL is down more than 20% today as well. King Digital, which just reported its first earnings as a public company, is down more than 10%. FireEye is down more than 20%. Groupon is down 17% after its earnings... Well, again, fa failed to thrill investors. So in general, a bit of a troubling ten trend, rather, for tech stocks. So what's going on? As TechCrunch notes today, venture capital behaves like an amped version of the NASDAQ. And when the latter falls apart, it closes the liquidity cycle for private money, which impacts valuations down to the earliest stages. Basically, we're in a slump. And we'll keep an eye on these numbers throughout this week. When it comes to e-commerce sales, Amazon is number one by a wide margin. The company sold $67.8 billion of electronics, media, and other products last year in 2013, which is more than its next 10 biggest online competitors combined. But 2013 e-commerce sales data from trade publication Internet Retailer shows a new runner-up, and that's Apple, which took the number two spot long held by office supply chain Staples. Apple took a 24% increase in online sales to $18.3 billion last year, thanks in part to Internet Retailer's inclusion of Apple's online hardware sales for the first time, not just the digital sales from its App Store and iTunes. On the growth side, global internet sales at Walmart rose by 30% to $10 billion last year, which bested Amazon's 20% sales growth during the same period. Okay, it's clouds for everyone. Under the name HP Helion, HP will spend $1 billion over the next two years on products and services around OpenStack, as the open source cloud software is known. HP will offer its own version of OpenStack, but also bundle its existing cloud offerings like workload management and software development under the Helion brand. The company will also offer a commercial version of Helion OpenStack this June. And it sounds like HP is really going all in. Just last week, the company also announced a joint venture between itself and Foxconn to sell cloud-optimized servers to providers of communication services like telecommunications companies and ISPs. All right, now on to Google, which just bought Stackdriver, which is a startup with software for monitoring the performance of applications running on cloud infrastructure. Now, this is interesting because until now, Stackdriver had been oriented toward monitoring applications on Amazon Web Services as well, which is a very popular web service indeed. Google could pull in revenue by either letting customers monitor applications on the Google Cloud as well as Amazon Cloud, or Google could cut off stack driver support for the Amazon cloud entirely. A mystery, at least for now. But Google's wallet, see what I did there? It was busy today. The company is also buying Apatos. That's a site where restaurants can build websites for themselves and integrate services like Grubhub and OpenTable to add extra features like delivery services and reservations. 
Hope you didn't like Apatos too much, though, because Google says it's going to shut down the service and begin transitioning existing users to alternative platforms to, quote, focus on our new endeavors, whatever those are. We don't know them yet. Apatos included not just reservations and delivery systems, but also social media integrations and mobile websites. Coming up, the virtual reality scent-powered flying machine. Oh, you're going to like this one. But first, I'm joined by Benjamin Cabin, reporter with Entrepreneur. Hey, Ben. Hey, how's it going? Very well. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be with you. Well, so let's talk about Yahoo. Today at TechCrunch is Disrupt. It was the third and final day of the of the conference. CEO Marissa Meyer talked with Michael Arrington a lot about how Yahoo was going to improve. Now, you had an article, Marissa Meyer, mobile was a huge missed opportunity for Yahoo. What did she admit? Well, I mean, she basically said that, uh, you know, before she came on board, Yahoo really wasn't doing much with mobile. Uh, you know, one of the highlights for me was she said that, uh, you know, there were a lot of people there who worked on mobile as a hobby, but, uh, you know, it wasn't really anyone's job. They didn't have a mobile team in place. Um, so when she got there, she said there was some, between some 30 and 60 developers who who did mobile scattered, uh, you know, among various teams. Um, and since she's taken over, it's been less than two years, but she's a, uh, you know, grown that, uh, you know, mobile development team into, uh, you know, 500. And, uh, you know, they're looking to expand and uh, hire hire more for mobile. Yeah, so it's it's not all bad news for Yahoo. I know Tumblr has, has uh, announced that if you view a variety of Tumble logs via mobile, now that they're going to have their customized uh, themes, which is something that they didn't have before. Is this just kind of a long process? It sounds like Meyer came in and looked around and said, nobody's really taking mobile seriously. And does it look like an, a next good year for the company? Uh, I think so. Things, you know, really look good for Tumblr. Tumblr is, uh, you know, it's a top 100 app uh, for iOS. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, like Meyer said today that 58% uh, of people are actually engaging with sponsored content and that 48% uh, of those users are, uh, you know, actually sharing it. So, uh, you know, that sounds like, uh, good news for advertisers, and uh, so that's good news for Yahoo and good news for Tumblr. What about the video side of things? T Tumblr, T Yahoo hired Katie Couric. Uh, uh, gosh, was it last year or back in January? I think it was. Uh, they made a big deal about video, original video, but it kind of remains to be seen how that's going to shape out. Did she mention anything on the new strategy there? Uh, yeah, she touched on uh, she touched on video a lot and said, uh, you know, they're looking at some original series and that they're doing a lot of uh, video news coverage that, uh, you know, is uh, getting a lot of really good attention. Uh, so she said uh, they had some branding issues actually around uh, that. I think they had a program called uh, Beat the Street um, that uh, they've since, I think, rebranded as just like Yahoo Financial. Um, but, uh, you know, they're taking video very seriously and... Uh, uh, Marissa sounded uh, very optimistic about it. So let's talk about the hire and subsequent departure of COO Enrique DeCastro. Myers said, there were issues there that I potentially created and it was important for me to fix them. What does it sound like happened there? Well, as you know, uh, you know, DeCastro quickly followed Meyer uh, from Google to Yahoo. And uh, so, I mean, she didn't really, uh, you know, say too much about it beyond that. But, uh, you know, I feel like she thought that, uh, you know, I guess it didn't seem to be a good culture fit um, is basically what she said. And uh, that's uh, why they parted ways. But, uh, you know, she she said, uh, you know, she wishes him nothing but the best. I'm sure he's he's doing great um, with, with or without Yahoo. So, um, you know. <laughs> you know, back to I guess there's that. <laughs> Back to mobile for just a second. So much emphasis has been put on Facebook being able to quickly turn around, being a little bit behind in mobile, making a lot of uh, advertising revenue on the mobile side of things. Twitter, uh, their, Twitter has had an interesting week. Uh, there, there are quite a few questions about Twitter strategy and mobile. What, what's your takeaway from what Yahoo has seemed to be doing, turning around the mobile side of things, and how the, how the company is going to look a year from now? Uh, you know, honestly, I think they will be strong with mobile. They're putting a lot of uh, their their energy and resources into, uh, you know, uh, their news app, their weather app. And uh, I think they really see it as the future. Uh, you know, Marissa Meyer was asked if it's, uh, 
if mobiles do or die. And uh, I mean, she said, I mean, she basically said it's very, very important. Um, like, like she said, uh, they're going to have crossover traffic, uh, you know, before the end of the year with more of their users, uh, more of their traffic coming in from uh, mobile devices than from PCs. So I think it's very clear that uh, mobile is where it's at for Yahoo and, uh, you know, Google, Facebook, and most tech companies. Very much. <laughs> mobile or die. Benjamin Cabin reports for Entrepreneur. Thanks so much for joining us, Ben, and tell folks where they can keep up with you online. Absolutely. You can... Uh, Follow me uh, at BenKWX on Twitter and uh, read my uh, read my work on entrepreneur.com. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Finally, let me ask you something. If you had one wish, what would it be? 75% of you or so would probably answer that you wish you could fly, right? I do anyway. If so, you're going to love Zurich University of the Arts Birdly Machine. It's modeled after an actual bird called the Red Kite, which lets you flap through the air. The machine does anyway. Motors translate your hand movement to virtual wings. An Oculus Rift VR headset gives you a bird's eye view of the scenery. A fan simulates headwinds depending on how fast you're going, and you're even supposed to smell whatever's below. Now, the team says that Birdly still needs some tweaks because it makes users queasy, although it's mostly meant to be an art installation rather than an actual sport. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss Tech News Today tomorrow and each weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.